Mostly my life consisted of pain and anger, uh, depression, involved a lot of a drug addiction, mostly methamphetamines. And feeling like I had messed up so much that God didn't even want anything to do with me anymore. I didn't care what I was doing to myself anymore. And that's when I went down a really, really bad road, a really bad road. I was lost and living in a dark place and running running from life, from my family, running from God. It was just constant misery. I had continually lost everything over and over again. Family, friends, lost my fiance. If I went in the local church and I said, raise your hand, if you know somebody you love, you care about, or yourself has been affected by crime and, and addiction, every hand inside the local church will be raised. And then my next question would be, what are you doing about it? Freeway Ministries Discipleship Houses are a place for men and women to learn things that they've never had before in their lives. From prisons, institutions, backgrounds where they could learn how to follow Christ, they, they could learn disciplines and principles. Uh, drinking about three to four liters of vodka a day and uh, I ended up going to the ICU unit four times in less than three months of cardiac ICU. If I wasn't in this house I have no doubt in my mind I would either be in the grave or uh, I'd be in prison. That would be my only two options. I tried to kill myself three or four times in which I literally stick the gun to my head and pull the trigger and it wouldn't go off. And I'd stick it to the floor and squeeze the trigger and it'd go off. There's no doubt in my mind if I hadn't, if it wouldn't be for Freeway Ministries and for this house, I'd be dead or in prison. Where would I be? Um, lots of places. I was always running. I never stayed in one place, not be doing anything good. I'd just be rebelling against everything. Before this house, um, I was in a really dark place. I felt very, very alone, um, very lost. I worked really, really hard to take care of my kids as a single mom, and it got hard. I turned to anything and everything to help me not feel, not feel the pain of failure. I lost who I was. I, I lost hope. Uh, I lost my friendships. I lost my kids. We change the mindset of you are what you've always been told you'll always be. You are your past. You are the failures. You'll never be nothing but this. And then we show them that God can shake the gates of hell with their lives, that they can be somebody that they never thought they could be. When I got out of prison in 2009, um, I was in a homeless shelter, and I developed disciplines and principles to live by. And the structure that I use, getting up early in the morning, reading my Bible, you know, staying away from relationships, the devotion of going to church, being involved in ministry, giving back uh, to the community, that structure kept me sober, kept me walking with the Lord. That structure is the structure of these houses, and it works. People who've never had a job, now they're working. People who have never been involved in church are now involved in church. People who have never had a purpose are now, they have a purpose. They are becoming fathers, they are becoming mothers. They are becoming uh, disciple makers who make disciples. I saw these guys whose lives were being changed and they were passionate about what God was doing in their lives. And it just captured me, I, I wasn't prepared for it. And then you just realize everybody needs the Lord. Everybody needs an opportunity to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ. And they need people who will care about them. Being able to see them get a house, get their kids back, get a car, and be able just to break that cycle in their life so their kids aren't picking up and doing the same things that they've seen done. Now they can see their mom going to church. Now they can see their mom praying. Now they can see their mom reading their Bible. It's a safe haven 
to know that they have people who are on the same journey who want to serve God and love God and guide you in the right way. These are people who have been there. You know, they understand and you see that they did it. You know, you see that they came from that place and look where they are now. In a year, I came in um, straight released from the ICU unit. Since then, uh, I work at two amazing jobs right now that work with me so I'm able to do ministry. Um, I've been discipled. Um, I now I get to disciple one of my brothers. Uh, I teach first grade Sunday school. Um, I got to coach uh, upward soccer and um, I'm enrolled at BBC uh, for the intercultural studies to do missions. I'm a different person and who God intended me to be. I'm a real person, real mother, a real friend. A real Christian. My dream now is for other women to have what I have and to feel what I feel, to know love and hope. I want them to feel joy. I've accomplished, you know, the basics of a job and all these normal things that I was supposed to be reaching for and doing was just like this light in the distance and I've stepped into that light. Well, first off, I've got a job again. Uh, another real big thing is uh, I get to see my kids again, and I hadn't been able to see them for two years. I've been sober since uh, Thanksgiving last year. That's the first time in my life since I was like 15 that I could say that. I have a future now, and I have a purpose in life. In my heart, the dream for our discipleship housing would be that we raise up leaders that are shot out in cities and counties all over America, where we can take this structure and partner with churches who are brave enough to tackle the issues that's going on in their backyard, and where we can plant these houses and we can make disciples in America and around the world. The people who are coming out of our program and graduate from our discipleship are changing the world.